Yes, good afternoon. I'm happy to uh, continue talking about tipping points with a focus on the Arctic ecosystem. So um, we have just heard uh, from the green and ice mass uh, how it's melting. These are data that we can extract from the special report on ocean and cryosphere. And basically we can, from that report, take that uh, everything that is cryosphere has increased in melting. Um, we have, uh, when you're a director of a polar research institute, you get to look into all new data that have not been synthesized, that are not in reports. And I can tell you in the past two years, everything is accelerating further compared to what is reported. I will focus as one example of a tipping point on sea ice. And you might uh, wonder why sea ice, because we know that sea ice is uh, frozen water. And when it's cold enough, it will just freeze again. So even if the sea ice would be melting away, it would take only one to two years to freeze it back again, and that's just physics. Hence, there has been scientific discussion about that sea ice really is no tipping point. What you're looking at here is the satellite observation of sea ice extent. And you look onto the red line, that's our year, and you see 2012, that was the largest sea ice uh, minimum that uh, humans have observed by means of satellite measurements. And you can see that this week, while we're meeting here, we're running into a new unprecedented autumn sea ice minimum. And especially the autumn and winter time are absolutely opaque to us. We have almost no data. And you've heard Markus Rex, our expedition leader, reporting that they've used quite some time to find a perfect flow. So we're talking about ice flows now as if there were almost extinct animals. What's the ecological tipping point? I have to complement the um, definition that Stefan just gave a little bit. So in biology, in ecology, we call a ecological tipping point a shift of an ecosystem with significant changes to biodiversity, food webs, and services the biology renders to people at regional or global scales. And one or several indicators have to be usually met before we agree that there is an ecosystem at a tipping point. The change becomes self-perpetuating. There is a threshold beyond which there is a really abrupt shift of ecological state, and changes are often often long-lasting and hard to reverse. For me, the best uh, example, I'm a granddaughter of a whaling grandfather, and the whales he has hunted in Antarctica has never returned to the original population size, despite all attempts to protect whales. So let's start with self-perpetuation. Here you look at my view, basically, from a helicopter out in the North Pole at the greatest sea ice minimum in 2012. You see the sea ice state, and it looks different from this white uh, cover that usually our satellite images suggest. And you can understand immediately what is self-perpetuating. Where the sea ice breaks and cracks, the ocean is much darker. It absorbs sunlight. It will start warming. And it will warm the sea ice that is mixed about by the winds. And so warming atmosphere, warming ocean, melts sea ice, sea ice breaks open, ocean warms more, and thus on and on, and this is self-perpetuation. Thresholds. What are the thresholds for Arctic sea ice? Here you see again the map on the left side with the latest sea ice minima and the minimum of this year that is the, record, the second record sea ice minimum. But if we take into account the thinning of the sea ice that Marcos has just pointed out, we have lost 90% of multi-year sea ice by now. And the sea ice is as thin as about 80 centimeters or less or 60 centimeters in September. We record September means for comparison through the years. And on the right side, you see the actual trend right now. And from that trend, we can calculate how long there will be sea ice in summertime. My colleague Dirk Notz and Julianne Ströwe, they have calculated a absolutely almost linear relationship between the metric tons of CO2 we are emitting and the sea ice we have left in summertime. And you can calculate that uh, how much sea ice you cost when you fly overseas. There would be no Arctic sea ice in September for an additional 1,000 gigaton of CO2 emissions, which give us another 30 years if you turn out around the path of uh, CO2 emissions. And um, now I would like you to turn to biology. Hard to reverse. It's not the sea ice that is hard to reverse, but it's all the life on and in the sea ice that will be hard to reverse. The sea ice melting, the warming of the Arctic, is a threat to a very unique ecosystem that consists of endemic species that have nowhere to go. 
What you see here is fantastic diver image from a colleague of mine, Hakon Hopp, from the Norwegian Polar Institute. He's one of the brave divers on the right side, uh, Melnikov, a Russian diver, and they show us the only images from this fantastic under ice ecosystem that is full of life, not only sea ice algae. There are crustaceans, there are jellyfish, there are fish that are they, just living under the ice. They are spawning there, they are breeding. And we have just discovered this underworld of jelly life that you can only observe with divers or with robots, because once a ship sails through, you have destroyed the ice and that gradient, that one meter gradient. Hard to reverse will be if the sea ice margin melts out and goes deeper into the basins, as you can see here on this middle graph, the green line, this is where our sea ice margin is today. This is uh, bad news for all of those animals that have to swim to the sea ice margin with their cubs, for example, the walrus, which has to go and hunt and teach the cub hunting, and they need the sea ice flows to rest, to, to um, gain energy again. And if the sea ice margin is too far from their habitat, then they will not be able to maintain. And while the sea ice margin is retreating, we expose the ocean to a variety of other threats. They will acidify more. They will be littered, literally, with uh, plastic litter. So we need more knowledge of thresholds in biological systems, and biology is utterly complicated. So we cannot wait for knowing everything, but I can tell you that you need biological knowledge to understand the fate of each organism and the network of biological interactions that produce that unique Arctic ecosystem from which many people take a living or a traditional cultural um, approach. The poleward migration of species is already in full force. The, um, the Atlantic cod is migrating into the Arctic and starting to replace the polar cod. The polar cod is the major food item for many of the marine mammals and also for people. So as biologists, we need to understand for each and every important key organism in the food web how they respond in their different life stages. Life stages are bottlenecks, and you see here in the central graph that, for example, an adult can adapt more to a temperature range, um, but, for example, growth can be much affected. So when the ocean is warming, the Atlantic cod will outgrow the polar cod. And the poor polar cod is also very refined in temperature adaptation for its spawning to less than 2 degrees Celsius of a warming ocean. And on and on. So while we are trying to show this knowledge to understand what chances and risks the Arctic warming have, you have to understand that it's upon us to decide whether a warming of 1.5 or 2 or more will occur. It's all about CO2 emission. But it cannot be only the managing of the future Arctic Ocean system it will be really hard to, man to just uh, look into the CO2 emission path lines and all the Arctic states cannot decide on their own what fate they will have. So managing threats to these unique ecosystems also means looking after fishing, after littering, after access, aquaculture and all of that. And you have to understand that you need scientific knowledge to decide about the future. The Arctic region remains that of the largest uncertainties in climate projections. Look at the right side here. We talk about warming of two more than the northern hemisphere, 2.4. But in reality, we have to face an uncertainty that it could be 10 degrees more. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>